एवरीवन टुडे इज वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट नोटोरियस इन्फेक्शियस डिसीजेस टाइफॉइड फीवर आई एम गोइंग टू वॉक यू थ्रू एवरी थिंग यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम रिकग्नाइजिंग इट्स सिम्टम्स टू द लेटेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट्स एंड एसेंशियल प्रिवेंशन टिप्स बकल अप बिकॉज बाई द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो यू विल बी वेल वर्स्ड इन टाइफॉइड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट Typhoid is an infectious disease caused by Salmonella typhi which is a gram negative non spore forming bacilli Epidemiology Typhoid germs are contracted from food or drink contaminated with excreta from carriers or patients The spread is facilitated by poor environmental hygiene immunity following the infection is not sufficient to prevent relapse Predisposing factors first organism a large number of organisms have to be ingested by healthy person to suffer from typhoid smaller inocula may produce the disease if the organisms are very virulent or if the resistance of the host is poor second stomach acidity the acid in stomach destroys salmonella that is ingested hence patients having no acid in stomach or who take large amount of antacids to neutralize the acid in stomach suffer more often from typhoid third intestinal flora the normal intestinal flora produces short chain fatty acids which are lethal to salmonella when these are reduced by antibiotics the patient is more prone to typhoid clinical features first enterocolitis in enterocolitis the infection is usually localized in the small intestines and colon the incubation period is usually 12 to 72 hours but may be up to 2 weeks nausea vomiting and an early chill are common initially followed by colicky abdominal pain and diarrhea of watery green offensive stools blood mixed with stool and high fever may occur if there is involvement of colon symptoms may subside within a week or two second enteric fever this is clinical syndrome characterized by fever headache prostration cough splenomegaly and leukopenia caused by salmonella typhi or para typhi the incubation period is 7 to 14 days third clinical course in the pre antibiotic era the patient gradually recovered or developed complications in the third or fourth week relapse occurs in 5 to 10% of untreated patients and 15 to 20% of patients on treatment then what is its treatment first enterocolitis this is a self limiting disease which requires only symptomatic treatment like fluid and electrolyte balance antiperistaltic agents etc antibiotics are used only if there is impaired host resistance enteric fever general measures patients with enteric fever must be given complete bed rest and preferably hospitalized because the incidence of complications is more in patients who have not taken adequate rest For the first few days a semi solid diet is advised and later a low roughage high calorie diet like bananas is advised. This is to decrease the intestinal content in presence of friable intestines. The general care of the patient includes good nursing and disinfection of excreta and bed linen in 2% Lysol. Fluid and electrolyte balance and vital signs must be regularly observed to detect any serious complications. fever and body ache can be treated with paracetamol and tepid sponging antibiotics conventional oral or iv chloramphenicol 500 mg 6 hourly in the first week followed by 500 mg 8 hourly for two more weeks quinolones ciprofloxacin 200 mg iv 8 to 12 hourly in a drip has been found to be very useful in chloramphenicol resistant typhoid fever If the patient is not vomiting it can be given orally in the dose of 500 mg 8 to 12 hourly Cephalosporins the drug of choice is ceftriaxone 3 to 4 g once daily for 7 days Other drugs 
azithromycin can be used in children and in pregnant or lactating females quinolones and zerovudine have a synergistic antibacterial effect against salmonella administration of both drugs simultaneously may dramatically decrease the risk of recurrent infection steroids in the absence of intestinal complications steroids can be used for severe toxicity hyperpyrexia septicemia and hemolysis along with antibiotics chronic carrier ampicillin 1 g 6 hourly for 1 week followed by 1 g 8 hourly for 6 to 12 weeks is needed so what should be done for its prevention typhoid can be prevented by improving personal hygiene sanitary disposal of excreta pasteurization of milk adequate water protection and identification isolation and treatment of chronic carriers vaccine injectable vaccine a vaccine prepared from heat killed salmonella typhi organisms is available for immunization of high risk persons It is given in the dose of 0.5 ml subcutaneously and repeated 4 weeks later in the dose of 1 ml. It gives protection for 2 years given more than 2 years of age. Oral vaccine one tablet on alternate days for 4 doses. Contraindicated in pregnancy in children less than 6 years of age repeated every 5 years. In conclusion Understanding typhoid is crucial for early detection and prevention. By recognizing its symptoms, seeking prompt medical attention and practicing good hygiene, we can collectively work towards a world with fewer cases of typhoid. If you found this video informative and helpful, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more valuable content. Your support means a lot and it helps us continue spreading awareness about important health topics like typhoid. Thank you for watching.